Radio Blur, CC Radio Blur, and CC Radio Fast Blur can all be found under the Blur and Sharpen category. I'll start by applying the Radio Blur to my logo, and we'll take a look at the properties. So right away, it has a value on the amount set to 10, so we're getting a blur applied to the logo. And the blur type is set to spin, so this is going to blur it in a radial way, hence the name. So if I turn up that amount, it's just going to increase that radial spin blur. And we have this interactive preview up here kind of showing us the distortion or the intensity of the spin. As I increase or decrease that amount, it's gonna update. We even have this little slider if we wanna control it that way. We can change the center point using these controls or by grabbing this point control within the composition itself. And as I move that around, you can see that's also moving this preview around. So I can even click and drag within this to adjust that same point control. I'm gonna reset that and then change the type from spin to zoom and then increase the amount. You'll see this is now just kind of a straight zoom blur, kind of mimicking a camera lens zooming in really fast, the blur you'll get from that. And again, we can offset this to not be in the center of the layer. We can also change the anti-aliasing from low to high and that will just increase the samples and make that a little bit less grainy. I'll set that back to low for now. And then we have this random seed value, which just basically randomizes the noise pattern used to generate this blur. So if you wanted to make this a little bit grainy and animated, you could. Now, something to notice is that when you blur this out past your layer bounds, it's going to get clipped at the edges of that bounds. So if you ever need it to go beyond that, then just add a grow bounds effect before the radial blur and increase that out. All this effect is doing is extending the bounds of the layer beyond this transform box. And to show you exactly what I mean, I'm gonna add a solid composite right after the grow bounds, and I'll just shut off the radial blur for a second. So with grow bounds set to zero, we have the bounding box set to our transform controls right there. And as I increase this, it's just going to add a margin basically, or a margin offset around that entire layer. So if you wanna be able to see this blur to the edges of your composition, you just gotta bump that out until it goes all the way to the edges. I can turn off that solid composite now and turn my radial blur back on, and now I can be sure it's not gonna get cropped off, even if I move this way off to the side. All right, I'm gonna get rid of all of those effects, and then let's take a look at CC radial blur. Apply that to the layer, and we have some similar controls. If I turn up the amount, we're gonna get that kind of rotating blur, but the type by default is called scratch, and this is going to basically rotate it in both directions. If I increase that, you can see that it's kind of blurring it out radially in both directions. If we change this from scratch to rotate, then it's only gonna rotate in one direction or the other. But we also have rotate fading, where I believe that the more blurred out areas are going to just fade out more into being transparent pixels. We also have straight zoom, which is very similar to the zoom on the radial blur. Also fading zoom, so again, the more blurred out pixels get more transparent, and centered zoom, which blurs out equally outwards and inwards. You see the difference between straight zoom where it's blurring it outwards, and centered where it's blurring both outwards and inwards. Again, we can change the center point, just like before, choose wherever we want this to blur from, and we have a quality slider. If I zoom in nice and close here and turn that quality way down, you can see that this is basically just a samples slider for how many samples it's going to use to generate that blur and make it nice and smooth. So the lower you can go with this, the faster it's going to render. This effect also is constrained to the edges of your layer, so make sure to use that grow bounds trick if you need your blur to go beyond the edges of your layer. All right, finally we have CC Radio Fast Blur, which like the name says is going to render just a little bit faster. You can see even just by adjusting the slider, it's much more responsive, but we have the trade-off of fewer controls. We can change the center point to control where that blur is coming from, and we can change the type from standard to brightest, where it's basically gonna constrain itself to blurring the brighter pixels more, or darkest to do the opposite, where it'll blur the darker pixels first. Now one thing I wanna point out with this effect is that if you move the center point outside of the layer bounds, basically it doesn't make a difference anymore. It's only going to respond with the direction of that blur while this point control is within the layer. And that's not true of the CC radial blur. If I blur this out on the straight zoom type 
and I move my center point outside, you can see that even though it's getting cropped off, it's still respecting the point that I'm moving the center to. So I could move this really far up and it's gonna give me a very straight down blur. But if I turn that off and the radial fast blur back on and we adjust that point value, as soon as we get beyond that top edge, then it's not going to do anything on that Y axis. I think this is partially why CC radial fast blur renders faster than the CC radial blur, but again, if you really wanna use this effect and you want that point control to continue to be responsive beyond the layer bounds, just add grow bounds before that effect, increase this, and now it's going to respond beyond that bounds. You might have to really crank this up to a higher value, just know that the higher you go with that, the longer this is going to take to render. You see that it's already being a little bit less responsive. So it's all a balance of what you're trying to do, the quality, and the render times. But that's Radial Blur, CC Radial Blur, and CC Radial Fast Blur in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.